Yellowstone supervolcano. USGS scientists deliver damning extinction verdict after supervolcano tests. Callum Hoare Express UK reports Yellowstone volcano scientists at the US Geological Survey revealed and released a bold statement after claims over the end of the world surfaced. We know Yellowstone Caldera gets its name labeled as a supervolcano due to its capability to inflict devastating eruptions, super eruptions on a global level, V8 eruptions, VEI8, hidden beneath the U.S. state of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. Idaho. Volcano is constantly monitored by USGS for any signs of eruption on the way. An event of this kind, of course, has occurred three times in the past. The super eruptions were 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago. And please look at the videos just before a few before this one, where uh, we have found that those both of those periods had asteroid strikes. It's believed that the asteroid strikes could have caused the Yellowstone supervolcano to erupt. And besides those two eruptions, we had the 640,000 year ago eruption, leaving some to claim that the massive eruption is overdue. Um, not that it could be Yellowstone, we may be overdue for another supervolcanic eruption. The last one that took place was 26,500 years ago, the Tapo volcano of the North Island of New Zealand. And before that was 74,000 years ago, at uh, concerning almost something that almost wiped out humanity. Now, um, the Topa volcano. Now, the self-proclaimed experts apparently incorrectly stated a future super eruption would mark the end of the world, wiping out all humanity. But after completing the scientific analysis, USGS explosively refuted those claims in a recent statement in the, uh, called the latest Caldera Chronicles. Dr. Michael Pollan was the one who gave that report. It reads, ash fall out to distances of hundreds of kilometers can be many inches thick, according to simulations carried out by USGS scientists. Besides these local implications, Volcanic eruptions that expel massive amounts of ash and gas into the atmosphere can have global impacts. In the atmosphere, sulfur dioxide in volcanic gases mixes with water to form sulfuric acid, which condenses to form, form fine sulfate aerosols. These aerosols reflect the heat of the sun back into space, which can cause cooling of up to several degrees worldwide, if the eruption is large enough. This may not sound like much, but it can be devastating to agriculture. And in Europe and in North America, in 1816, it was known as the year without a summer because of global cooling caused by the 1815 eruption of Tambora in Indonesia. The statement went on to explain how large amounts of ashfall could be damaging for Earth. It said a large number of crops failed as a result of the cooling due to that eruption. The more recent 1991 eruption of Pinatubo in the Philippines also caused global cooling, perhaps on an average of about one degree Fahrenheit during the following year. Huge volcanic eruptions like the most recent big Yellowstone eruption explosion, which occurred 630,000 years ago, are about 10 times bigger than that of Tambora of 1815, and perhaps 100 times bigger than Pinatumbo's 1991 blast. So it's easy to see that such huge eruptions probably have a significant impact on a global climate that might last for years. We can be confident of this because there have been two massive explosions while humans were present on Earth, and both of these were actually larger than Yellowstone's most recent cataclysmic eruption. USGS scientists went on to explain they have learned a lot from previous eruptions. The statement continues saying these eruptions were from Toba, Indonesia, 74,000 years ago. That was the one that almost wiped out everything. Anthropologists say that there was only about 2,000 couples. It was called a bottlenecking of humanity. Very few 
existed, uh, lived through that, and they repopulated the earth. And the last one was from Taupo, New Zealand, the North Island of New Zealand, that exploded 26,500 years ago. And uh, geologists say that just about somewhere on earth, a supervolcano would erupt about every 17,000 years, every 17,000 years. So we're overdue about 10,000 years from what the looks of it. Now, the geological record does not contain any information about the New Zealand eruption and its impact on humanity, although climate must certainly have been affected by that. For many years, the Toba eruption was suspected of causing the near extinction of humanity. Homo sapiens only appeared in Africa, they said, about 200,000 years ago. So at the time of the Toba eruption, our species was still not particularly advanced or widespread. Well, that's what some people say. Others say differently. Genetic evidence suggests that at the time our ancestors migrated away from Africa, shortly after the time of the Toba eruption, there were only a few thousand individuals. This had led some scientists to speculate that the Toba eruption nearly wiped out humanity, but evidence from archaeology suggests that humans did not suffer greatly from the effects of the Toba eruption. For me, that's very hard to believe. Uh, because there were only 2,000 humans, 2,000 couples that were left. Now, after the scientific agency USGS did admit life would not be easy after a super eruption, they concluded archaeological evidence from southern Africa shows that Homo sapiens were thriving uh, during and following the eruption. Again, it's very hard for me to believe that Homo sapiens could be thriving in all this toxic ash and uh, poisoned water, no food to eat, no plants, no animals, nothing. Um, how could people be thriving in something like that? Uh, that's my comment. Anyway, let's go on with this. It says, this is not meant to make light of the impacts of future large explosive eruptions. In fact, a topa-sized eruption is not needed to cause changes in climate, as a smaller tambora eruption demonstrated. Rather, we hope to explain why it claims that Yellowstone will cause an end to humanity are wrong. Instead, such eruptions will cause major changes to the environment and will require humans to cope with extreme conditions. Our dependency on global trade, electricity, and other aspects of modern life will be impacted and create challenges that our Stone Age ancestors did not have to deal with, but we are an adaptable species. Humans would not go extinct. Okay. Perhaps, even if you had one man and one woman, they would not go extinct. Okay, it would be another Adam and Eve all over again. That was um, taken verbatim from, uh, of course, Dr. Michael Poland's Caldera Chronicle of USGS, the latest ones. And I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.